Um, I'm the Strategy and Client Services Director at Abacus, have been with Abacus for seven years and um, help um, you uh, as members to get the most out of the alliance. All the account managers, account directors are working with you on a day-to-day -day basis to maximize the data. Um, and uh, that's me. I think I'm okay with this one. Um, hello, um, I'm Verity from House of Bath and I head up the marketing team. I've been with House of Bath um, since November 2010, so just short of four years. And it was actually my first move client side because prior to that I had been um, an account director at various different um, direct marketing agencies. Um, hi, I'm Vicky Curry. I head up the segmentation selections team at JD Williams. So it's twofold. There's the segmentation team that have, we've got about 70 odd different propensity models. We've got segmentations for our nine key brands within the JD Williams group. And then the selections team are the team that work very closely with our CRM teams to actually select the right customers to be um, contacting, whether it's by um, offline, online, SMS, outbound telemarketing. So the teams work very closely together. Excellent. Thank you, Verity and Vicky, for um, being part of this presentation today to demonstrate how um, data tagging, one of the products Mark and Michele touched on briefly earlier, can be used uh, to maximize the strategy. And I'm just going to run through quickly what we're going to cover. Um, Verity is going to introduce House of Bath in a bit more detail so that you know who we're talking about. Um, and uh, Vicky will explain what the challenge was around the strategy. Um, we will then dive into the data and uh, the solution uh, that has been used to help those challenges. Um, a little bit of technical detail around how we create variables for this particular purpose. Um, and a bit more broad information how this can be applied, not only for House of Bath, but for many other members on the Abacus Alliance. Um, we will show a bit of a sample segmentation to make it more visible. And then Vicky will also explain uh, what the results were that House of Bath got out of this in the end. So back to Verity. Okay, thank you. Um, looking around, I don't think any of you are probably our target audience. Um, our target audience are 65 plus females. So I don't expect you know an awful lot about us. Um, House of Bath was established back in 1998, uh, about 16 years ago in Bath as a home shopping company to provide products um, predominantly for your bedroom, bathroom and beyond with one retail store which was based in Bath. Um, in 2004, we were acquired by the JD Williams Group who are based in Manchester. However, um, as it stands today, all core functions such as marketing, buying, merchandising, production still remain in Bath. Um, functions such as warehousing and call centre were obviously in integrated into the group. In um, 2008, we actually closed the store to focus predominantly on mail order. And to date, our printed catalogue, again, I, you, you may or may have not seen it, absolutely remains our key selling vehicle. Um, we mail this out on a regular basis to our existing customers and also use a variant of this to recruit new customers through press inserts, merchandise ads, direct mail, and with a little bit of online recruitment more recently. Um, and I think that, you know, there has been a bit of a shift over the years in terms of our product <coughs> offering. We've moved away from the, perhaps the more aspirational, higher-end products um, to offering our customers really great ideas and solutions for the home. Um, and really, that has evolved from, you know, what our customers are telling us they need <coughs> and they want. We've seen um, extraordinary growth over the last five years, um, and with that comes particular customer challenges, <laughs> excuse me, um, and I think, you know, that's where Abacus really do play a part, trying to enrich that data, really. So, okay. Vicky? Okay, thank you. Um, so, as Verity said, we're extremely, we're well-established multi-channel retailer, um, so we're extremely data-rich anyway. Um, we've got wealth of customer information, um, knowing exactly what the customer's ordered, what product she's ordered, the size, the colour, the date of the order, the date of the return, the channel of the order, the list is endless. Um, all of this is obviously an, an advantage when the customer is actually engaging with the brand. Um, 
we're able to send the most appropriate contact at the most appropriate time and through the most appropriate channel. However, when the customer is not engaged, when they're a dormant customer, it's difficult to actually understand what will re-engage that customer to the brand. Um, we've already got, as mentioned within the segmentation modelling team, we've already got multiple scorecard systems and um, segmentations in place. We're able to know that the customer will spend X amount in the following six months, that she will have a high probability of ordering from footwear, etc. However, by overlaying this additional um, market information, we're actually 100% able to maximise the customer retention budget, which is obviously key. So just to go in a bit more detail of what we know and what Abacus can actually tell us more about our customer. So we know that we've got transactional information, we've got demographic information, so we know what she's ordered. We know that she's female, that she's 65. We know that she's browsed online, but it's been from footwear. She's engaged in an email that's actually been from our homeware department or not, or that it's been from our menswear department. We know that she's ordered twice in the last month, or she hasn't. But what Abacus can now tell us is additional opportunities, not within just the brand, but outside of the brand. So for House of Bath itself, it's absolutely key to be re-engaging the dormant customers, but also what other opportunities are there for that customer. So we're able to overlay that she's got six purchases in the mid-market clothing in the last 12 months. She's spent £348 in the children's category in the last 12 months. If she hasn't done that within House of Bath, it's very difficult to actually be sending an appropriate contact to them. So House of Bath can say that, um, that we, she hasn't ordered online, but Abacus can actually say she's used internet as an order channel across the whole of the alliance. So all of this information is absolutely key to be not only re-engaging dormant customers, but also showing what opportunities are out there as well. Thank you. Um, so, as we've heard, um, there's an extra dimension of data that could be included into what um, House of Bath already knew about their customers. And I'm going to explain in a bit more detail what kind of information has been added to enrich that data, as we have said. So, just to summarize, um, it means that we can understand better what House, House of Bath customers are doing elsewhere, what they're doing across all the different brands of the Abacus Alliance, and that is the valuable information that can drive further discrimination and further selections in the end. Um, we also kind of heard what, what the benefits were for House of Bath and why House of Bath wanted to use it to add that additional layer, but keep the data selections in-house. Uh, as we've heard earlier from Mark and Michele, we do have um, clients that use us to do the, the entire selection process, but where the in-house capability is there, we are happy to just give the data into that process to keep the data selection in-house. Um, it gives visibility not, not only across the category a particular client is in, like home interior or fashion, um, it can have uh, relevance to see what they're doing across all the different categories. So even for a fashion retailer, the gardening purchase behavior can be relevant in that context. Um, yes, we can identify um, active buyers, we can identify suppression um, potential, but also identify lapse buyers that should be contacted for reactivation purposes. Um, and there's other applications um, that can be added to the data tagging or can be used as part of the data tagging, like finding out your share of wallet against your competitors um, in a particular time period uh, that can also then be used to um, optimize the strategy further. Uh, bottom line is that additional insight will complement your own file and will enable you to do things that you haven't been able to do before. Um, just briefly touching on a particular, what we call bespoke variable or an aggregated variable, because we have so many variables in the Abacus Alliance that it can be quite um, daunting to include all of those into a new segmentation and combine them with an existing segmentation. Um, and we can normally test and find out through Michaeli's team 
what variables are the most powerful or what criteria are the most powerful. And that is kind of culminated in the, in the bespoke variable that we deliver to House of Bath. So we analyze um, who the typical House of Bath customer is buying from across the different Abacus brands. And we include, comp as I said, competitive and non-competitive categories. It could be a category that is non-obvious that, um, that comes into that selection. Um, and that list of brands um, is most predictive in distinguishing good and bad customers in the end. Um, it contains purchase behavior across all these brands. The lifestyle information does come into lots of abacus models, but what we always believe in is that the transaction, that the actual putting money on the table to buy something, that that makes the big, biggest difference and that purchase behavior is included in this, in this variable. And the next slides will also show a bit better what that looks like. Um, the variable is then simply overlaid to the House of Bath customer file and added as a, as a field, as a column. And I'm going to explain that a bit further. Uh, and it, it can then be incorporated in the customer segmentation. So without going too techy, um, this is an example of what it could look like, what you actually get as part of a tagging file. Um, so the blue column, the third column here, is your customer IDs, your customers, uh, those customers are obviously present on the Abacus database and have a unique identifier there as well. Uh, but then we have different variables that can be appended to each and every of the customers that can be used uh, to segment and to derive information. Um, and the last column on, on, on this chart is uh, the bespoke category variable in this instance with a lifetime spend in it. So in this instance it's really a, a pound number, 1,836 pounds spent um, in between the brands that made it into the bespoke category and that is information that can be used for segmentation in the end. Um, it's a very simple view but this is what it looks like and simple is always better um, and it's really just matching your customers across what we know and add those fields to your database for you to use them. So diving into the concept a bit further, uh, what can it do um, for, or what has it done for House of Bath in terms of the mailing strategy? Um, everyone in this room looks at recency and uh, RFM in, in one form or the other and mails active customers more heavily than inactive customers. Um, and there's a kind of a consensus that recent customers in the last 12 months normally receive mailings, they are deemed active um, and they uh, also justify uh, to put marketing spend behind it. But then there's the older customers that haven't bought recently where the decision making is not that easy. You might or might not send them something um, and you might or might not put marketing spend behind uh, this segment and that is where additional discrimination can be useful. And then there are the real inactives, however, where you put, put the cutoff here, put the cutoff at 25 plus months, but those that really haven't bought anything for a long, long time. And this is also the f a segment uh, House of Bath we're focusing on in the end for reactivation purposes. So if this is your current, what, what you, your current view of the database, um, what it can look like overlaying additional variables is, for instance, the bespoke category activity variable that I was talking about is even in your active file, you might find a subset of customers that are really not worth mailing or not worth mailing as often um, as you have done previously. And there's a suppression opportunity to save money and not put as much marketing spend to, towards certain customers. Then there's the middle segment uh, where we then can provide that further discrimination. Okay, which ones are good to mail, which ones aren't good to mail, which ones should be suppressed to save money and which ones should be optimized in terms of contact strategy or offer strategy. And then uh, the main part of what House of Bath are doing is really looking at what subset of customers within the older data can be mailed profitably and can increase the overall demand and can increase the overall mailing strategy. Um, so it's basically, as you go down the recencies, it's a mix of opportunity and suppression um, that leads ultimately to either larger universes or, and an increased demand, but ultimately to a better ROI 
on the mailing activity. So the suppression opportunity is, is one uh, part of uh, the whole cost saving and RI calculation, but then the additional mailing opportunity in the older data is the second part of that improvement of the mailing strategy. And I think that is kind of where you get the most at the moment out of the lab spire reactivation. And we're gonna share a few results uh, a bit later. Um, again, not to go too techy, but uh, this is just uh, an example of the previous slide in, 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 in real life. I have to say it's not House of Bath, so it's, it's, it's anonymized. It's, we don't know who, which client it was who did this. Uh, so the figures are not real in that respect for House of Bath. But uh, with uh, looking at the color coding in the last column, um, what we did here on the left hand side is what the client did previously as a recency segmentation. And then we overlaid various variables to make the view more granular, to make the view more detailed. And there was no distinction possible, for instance, in the middle segment, 13 to 24, for that particular client to decide should I mail certain customers or not. Overlaying additional data, overlaying additional variables has enabled to distinguish between the green and the red cells, uh, which are profitable or not profitable. So what this did for this particular client is uh, to identify extra um, um, a suppression opportunity in, in even the active file to save money. Uh, the ability to separate in that kind of middle layer, um, but then find additional uh, 7,000 names in this instance to mail from the older data that they haven't touched before, and those 7,000 names produced a, an acceptable response rate and return on investment, um, and therefore made money for this particular customer. So this is just an example, but um, um, Vicky will go into more detail uh, what it did for House of Bath. Thank you. Um, one of the initial anal analysis that we did um, when we received all the data tagging back was to just do a very simple um, look at the what the customers are doing internal versus external in the same product categories. So just simply se segmenting the database by whether they'd place no order, single order or multi orders, internal and external. And what we found was that 11% of the accounts tagged had placed more orders externally in the same product, product categories in the previous year. They were spending over four million pounds externally, which was 30 times more externally um, than internally per customer. So even just getting 1% of that four million pounds would obviously make a huge difference to the bottom line for House of Bath. Um, Overlaying that profile analysis on um, a previous mailing showed again a big difference in response rate. So taking the customers who had had no order internally and a single order externally versus those customers who had a single order internally and an, uh, were multi-orders externally, there was a difference in response rate of 1.2 percentage points. So again, big difference. So you're able to target your customers better knowing exactly what they're doing externally if they're not doing anything with yourselves. And I think the benefit for you is also, th since you have such a large file, there's a lot of potential in there. Uh, a lot of uh, customers that haven't been mailed previously and could be reactivated. And of course, the larger the file, the, the, the more demand can be generated and uh, the better the return on investment is of the whole exercise in the end. Um, but we, we do this also for, for smaller files and squeeze that, that data asset that you have as hard as we can. So um, in summary, really, um, what we wanted to explain to you in this instance is that internal data can have its limitations. Uh, you know a lot about your customers and you determine uh, your marketing strategy around that, of course, but there is external data available that can create just that extra layer of information um, um, that helps to distinguish the good from the bad ones. Um, and that external data, of course, in this instance, is, are the abacus variables based on the purchase information, um, not on any lifestyle or survey data, really on hard currency purchase information. Um, as we've learned, we append that information to your own records, you use it in-house, uh, you can do with it what you want, <laughs> and uh, we refresh it regularly. 
to make sure that the transactional data and that the uh, that, that is as, as recent as possible so that for instance a lapsed customer of house of bath can be reactivated based on the most recent purchases they have made uh, um, even in the last three months after the last refresh uh, for you guys i think we do a quarterly refresh in order to keep the data up to date um, as we've also learned it can be used for reactivation which is the main purpose uh, for house of bath but we can also suppress uh, unresponsive cells uh, to save money. And that's the second part of uh, the benefits. Um, ultimately, it's all about making more money and create, creating an uplift in demand uh, from lapsed buyers, from reactivated buyers, increase the number of orders you're getting through, or alternatively to uh, suppress those unresponsive ones that save you money. I hope that all made sense. Uh, if there are any questions, please fire away. Okay, thanks for listening. I think we're ready for lunch. <laughs>